Hello and welcome to Board Game TV. It's Fantasy Friday and we are playing our last, very last scenario for Pathfinder Rise of the Rune Lords. And we're playing Into the Eye. <clears throat> and it's the Eye of Avarice, an other dimensional sanctuary secret within the pinnacle of Avarice lies exposed. Within rest the final guardians of Xen Shalast, a rune well that powers the arcane dimension and the reawakened tyrant himself, Karzog, rune lord of greed. Okay, so there's only one location. It's the rune well. And it's basically no blessings deck is used, so we don't have to worry about that. Shuffle Karzog and one henchman per character into the rune well deck. Defeating a henchman or villain does not close the rune well unless the deck is empty. Karzog may not be defeated unless the deck is empty. Okay, so straightforward here. Um, we're at the rune well. At the start of your turn, bury a card of your choice, but we won't have to do that quite yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with Kyrak. Now, he has the Revelation Quill, and we are going to bury this to examine the top five cards of the location and put them back in any order. Two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to put Karzog on the bottom of that. We know he's there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And send Kyra there. And let's see what he's going to get here. It's going to get the this thing right here. Strength or melee 12. Well... No. Okay. And um, that's it. No blessings deck. No rush. We're done. Valeros is going to go. He doesn't have to bury a card. Greater bolstering armor. Constitution fortitude. There's no way he gets that. Um, that's it. He's done. Ezrin's going. We have Invoke which is Wisdom Divine. Now, he's not really good at that, so he won't do that. Um, he will play the Mountaineer, though, and he will explore again, and we have the Flaming Icy Axe. He can't get that, but that's the end of his turn. Okay, so now it is Kyra's turn. And let's see what we have here. We're going to have to bury something. Uh, and we're going to bury... Let's bury the raised dead spell. There's no point in it. Let's go ahead and bury that. And we have... Here's our guy. Okay. Wow. 30 and 40. Holy cow. He's immune. To, before attempting to play a spell with the attack trade, succeed at Arcane Divine 15... Or you are dealt one poison damage and you may not play spells with the attack trait. Okay. <laughs> Alright, before the encounter, each character's location attempts a constitution of fortitude. Fort See here, dealt two poison. Okay. Wow. Okay, so this guy ain't no problem. <laughs> ain't no. Ain't no uh, he is a transmuter, so we have the Rune Forge weapon. Okay, all right, let's see if we can do our thing here. 12. Okay, he is not dealt one poison, and we are able to play spells with the attack trait. Okay, now we each have to do the Constitution Fortitude 15 check. Now, I don't think that's going to happen there on him, so... He's not going to do it, so we're going to have to deal 1d4 plus 1 fire damage. Okay, three fire damage, so we'll lose the axe, uh, the blessing, and the short spear. Mm, we'll get rid of this blessing. Okay, he has to do a constitution, and he's not going to do it, so he has to take whew, five damage there. Eek. Okay, well, which one do I want to keep? I guess I'll keep something else. 
Okay, and then he won't pass it, so he's going to take four damage. And we'll get rid of the War Razor, the Lightning Touch, because that's not going to do anything. One the Scorching Rays, and the Bewilder. Okay, alright, so the Sign of Wrath. Wow. So there's no way I'm going to beat this cat. There's just no way I'm going to do that. I don't have what it takes to beat him, honestly. Well, actually, um, if I took and got rid of both blessings, actually. Okay, I want to keep the one. I don't want to lose the one. I'm going to lose the one anyways, ain't I? Um, well, let's look at the rune forged weapon. <laughs> so I get a 2d4. So I get 2d4 with this. And then a 1d4 because Valerios is with me. Okay. So, if I use my wand here, okay, which I'm going to try to do, okay, this guy is minus seven, okay, and I can try to recharge it. And I do actually, I needed an eight and I got an eight, so I can recharge that. Okay, so with the seven, the seven now, he is 23 and 33. So, <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm going to use the short spear first, so let's use the short spear, and that's for my combat. Reveal this to roll your strength or melee, which is a d6, plus a d6, plus 3, and then I can discard it to add a d12. I had to bury that. There we go. Okay. Okay, well, this is 11, 15, 18, okay, 23. Okay, so we beat him the first time. Now let's go ahead and play him again with the second time. Now, I'm going to use my Sign of Wrath this time. And I'm going to get my Arcane and Divine, plus I get my other three, plus a 3d8. I need 33. Okay. So, uh, that was a 4. I'm sorry. That's 8 uh, plus 4 is 12. And then Valeros is 4 plus 2 is 6. So, that's 18. 21. 24. 31 so we we beat him we're able to beat him and can I recharge the sign of wrath no that sucks however he has to take one damage each character without either arcane or divine because he has neither one of those so he's gonna have to lose that and he is now going back in the deck Oh boy, this guy is just no easy thing. He can keep coming up. All right. But that's the end of the turn. It's now Valeros' turn. We're going to give him some new cards. Okay. Let's see what happens. And this is a Blizzard spell. He can't get it. Okay. All right. Now it's Kyra's turn. Let's draw him some new cards. Okay, and he comes across a headband of epic intelligence. Now there's a possibility for him to get that, but he rolled a one, so no. Okay, now it's Kyra's turn.
Okay, and he gets Sign of Wrath. Well, this is a good spell. This is a 14. I'm able to try to get it. All right, 6 plus 4 is 10, so I'm not going to get it. Okay, but I'm not going to do anything else, so that's it for him. Next up is Warden of Runes. Okay, <clears throat> each character must succeed at a constitution or deal one electricity damage. Okay, that's fine. Um... I can recharge that. Okay. Recharge that. And recharge. I'm sorry. I can't recharge that. I don't know what I'm thinking. I gotta get rid of it. And then we get rid of the blessing here. Okay. All right. So, Valeros, that guy's 23. I probably play the Acidic Sling. So, I'm going to roll my Dexterity, which is a D8, plus a 1D6. This card to add another 3 die 4. This guy's only 23, so. Shouldn't be that bad. Okay. So my dexterity is a D8 plus 1, so it's 6. And then a D6 plus 3, 7. So that's 13. And then 4 is 17. And then another 4 is 21. And this 2 is 23. That's enough to beat that guy. Okay. Uh, well, he's beat, so, but, you know, we can't close the location. So that's the end of his turn. So let's, Ezra's going to go, and we're going to get Belt of Physical Might. He can't really get that. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution. No. Okay, so that's the end of his turn. Now it's Kyra's turn. Let's see what we're going to do. Okay, here this guy is again. Unless I had something. Okay, before, before actually, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a mulligan. Because I'm going to play Mass Cure. So, uh, each person is going to shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from a discard pile. Okay, so I was able, I did Mass Cure, I was, uh, got, everybody got five more cards, and I'm able to recharge it because I rolled an 11. So that was, uh, his turn. So his turn is over with. That's it. Next is Valeros. And we know he's, we know he's there. Okay, before, uh, well, we don't have to play any spell. So we don't have to worry about that, but each character has to do Constitution Fortitude. And there's no um, 15. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Now, he's got to do, I'm going to do him, well, uh, I'm going to discard this. Okay, so he doesn't take any more of that. Okay, he does three. And let's see what we're going to lose. Well, might as well lose Scorching Ray. Might as well lose Bewilder. And Frost Ray. And then Kyra is going to lose only two. Okay, we'll lose this guy. And which one? This Blessing here. Okay. Fortunately, though, we won't get... We get well, we still get the bonus there for the 2D4. So let's, we'll have that. Let's see what I want to play here. I have the club and I have the sword of greed. Oh, well, yeah, I could have reduced that because it was only one. Okay, well, then I keep that and I'll just reveal that. All right. <clears throat> All right, so uh, combat, reveal this card to roll your strength. 
plus 1d10. Alright, I may discard one other card from my hand to add another d10. Okay, which I will. I'll discard this ring. Okay, so I get to add another d10. Okay, that's, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. But that might be good enough to beat him on 30. Okay, it's not good enough to beat him on 30. That's 10. I rolled a 1 there, so that's 11. That's horde. Um, plus 6. Actually, plus 5, I'm sorry. Plus 5, and the 2 is 7. So it's 18, 20, 23. Okay, I'm gonna take 10 damage. Okay, so I can discard that to reduce it by four, and then all this is gone. And so he's going to just uh, defeat us, defeat him, and after he deals one fire damage to him, uh, I'm not gonna take any more damage, and that's it. That's, that's it for that. All right. Okay, well that's the end of the turn. So, it's going to be Ezrin, he's going to go, and we have this enslaved blue dragon, 23. Before the encounter, it attempts a dexterity or acrobatics check. Okay, there's no way I'm passing that, so we're going to have to take 2 damage. That's fine. I can live with that. Uh, 1. Actually, I can recharge this. Okay. He has no health, so it's not going to matter. And, woo. He has to do five damage. That's gone, man. That's... all. Oh, that's gone. Okay. Okay, I need a 23 to beat this guy. This is he's immune to anything. So, um... We're going to play Lightning Bolt, which is my thing in 3 die 6. And I can use Valeros is there, so I get a 1d4. Oh, and uh, I can recharge this guy to add another 1d4. So, let's do that. Okay. So, let's see what we got. Well, we have 11. And then if we add my thing is 4, that's 15, 19, 20, 24. So the blue dragon has been beaten. But that's the end of that turn. So now it's Kyra's turn. Okay. Ugh. Okay, so we have this blessing here. Uh, okay. I can actually take it. Okay, so... I'm gonna... Ha okay, this is the last card. We know it's coming. So, I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of strategy and see what I can do. To beat this guy now I know I'm automatically getting this now I may not explore with him <coughs> because then I would lose the 1d4 um, I don't have to explore um, sh you know what I've been forgetting to bury a card but I haven't had any cards everybody's been beaten up but okay um, we'll bury these two We'll say let's bury two cards. We're going to bury these two. And we'll bury... This one. And this one on him. I've had nothing to bury. Because at the start of my turn, I'm there. I don't have any cards. So, yeah, I've kind of messed that up a little bit. But, yeah, I think that's past two turns. So... And that was, he had no cards last turn. 
he did have some, but I'll just go ahead and lose two cards on him. I didn't think about what I want to do, so let me think about this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do anything with him. We will not explore. We don't have a time limit, so we don't have to worry. So I'm just going to draw my six cards because I want him to be able um, to do that. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to give him anything, so that's fine. It's Ezrin's turn. Ezrin is not going to go either. Okay, but however, Ezrin will may trade a card. The luck stone. See, if you would fail a check by two or less, you may bury this card to succeed. I may give him the luck stone. To be honest with you. Um if I give him the luck stone, if I do that, then, yeah, if I do that, if I give him the luck stone, see, I don't need him to give him anything. And see, I can play this blizzard. Okay. Alright, so, I am going to give him... And I'm going to give him the luck stone. Okay. And that's it. That's the end of his turn. Now, it's his turn. Wait a minute. No, if I give him the luck stone. If I give him the luck stone, I can't draw a card. I need, I need to be able to draw a card to get another weapon. Okay. Let's see. Let's let's look at that. See. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna get rid of that one there. Um. Oh. Okay. I could just do another round of that, and discard a card. So let's see. I need a weapon. So let's see what I get. Okay. I got my short spear. Okay. That's. I needed that. <clears throat> so I have my two weapons. Um. And I have my wand. Okay. I think we're going to... I'm not going to give the luck stone. Okay, so we're just going to plow on. Okay. So let's see. Alright. I have to play a spell with the attack trait. I have to pass this. And I don't want to take poison damage. So I'm going to play a blessing. This blessing here. And try to do this. I need to pass my check. Okay. 7 and 5 is 12, but plus my bonus passes. So we've done that. Now we have to do a Constitution Fortitude check. Okay. So first is 3, 4 damage. Okay. But I have the full plate, so I can recharge this. And I have to bury a card too. God damn it, I forgot about that. Okay, I'm about to bury this blessing. I forgot. Okay, so that's what I have. Okay. Um, Valeros will fail. So he's he's gonna take five damage. Wow. So I can recharge this to three and I can draw a card. And then I can do this, recharge that. So that's fine. And then he will go four damage. Yeah. Well, okay. I get one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Now let's try to fight. Now, I have the blizzard. And as a magic user, place his card in front of you when a character encounters a bane. Any character who encounters a monster this turn adds 2d6 with the cold trait to her combat check. Discard this card at the end of this turn, and every other character takes one cold damage. Okay, so we're going to get these and this. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm going to play my wand again. I was able to do that. 
and I'm going to roll and we're going to we're going to see if we can't get this guy down. And we get him down 5 plus 4 9. He's down 9. Let me put a 9 there to remember that. 9. He's down 9. So he's not 21 and 31. Okay. All right. So two, then Valeros, then the 2d6, and now we're gonna play my short spear, and I'm gonna do my strength or melee plus a d6, and then you may additionally discard to add a 1d12. Okay. So we need 21. Okay, well, that's not the greatest, but that's a lone 10, 8, 20, okay, so 26, okay, so that is done, okay, so now 2 die 6 and that, and then Valeros, okay, now I'm going to play the Sign of Wrath, because I passed my check. So I'm going to get this and 3d8. And I can recharge this to add uh, 5 with the fire check. So I'm going to get 5 plus 5. So I think we're going to beat this guy. I think we're going to win. Okay, so let's see what I have. Okay, just adding alone, there's 10. There's another 10, that's 20. And then 30, that was a 7, I moved it. 30, and then, okay, we won handily. Okay, woo, alright, well, we won. And we're, we're supposed to get all this loot, but it's not a weird thing I don't understand. Why am I getting that loot? This is the last adventure. There's no other place to do this. So, okay, I don't, I don't get that. Okay, so we close this location automatically. We beat this guy. We've won. Pathfinder: Rise of the Rune Lords. Okay, so uh, we're done with Pathfinder: Rise of the Rune Lords for Fantasy Friday. So next Fantasy uh, Friday. We're going to be starting back up Descent with uh, a new set of uh, for Descent. But let's talk about this game. I think this game is very underrated. Um, I really like this game. Not only is it one of my favorite deck builder games, it's one of my favorite games overall. Even I don't really get into the Pathfinder lore or anything like that. And I think we had a fairly successful campaign. Um, we, I think we lost one. <laughs> I've probably made several mistakes. But, um, they have four sets. They have Skull and Shackles. This is Rise of the Rune Lords. Then came Skull and Shackles. Then comes Wrath of the Righteous. Then calls uh, the Mummy's Mask. This is one of my favorite ones. I just like the theme of this one at the beginning the best. It dealt with a lot of undead, cannibal ogres, uh, cult, evil cults. I thought it was really cool. It kind of got towards the fantasy really type towards the end, but okay. Would I recommend this game to somebody to buy? Absolutely. I highly recommend this game for somebody even if you don't know anything about Pathfinder first of all um, the presentation and organization is superb you, every you just everything fits in this box the box is a decent sized box but everything fits and it's so convenient I wish a lot of deck building games, they're starting to do this now. But remember when this first came out, not all of them did this. But I wish, I think it should be a requirement that all deck building games 
come with a setup like this to where you have everything perfectly organized, period. Um, there's no excuse for it. You have several characters we didn't even touch. Uh, Marcel, Harsk, Lim, Sioni, and there's expansion packs you can buy. Now, I wouldn't buy the expansion packs, but you know, you, you pay $40, $50 for the base set that comes with the first adventure. Then I think you buy these for what was the prices on these? 20 bucks. So 20, 40, 60, 81. You're spending about $150. Okay? Granted. Now, if you can get it cheaper, hey man, get it cheaper. And you probably can to a certain extent. But look how long, look how many episodes we played with this. Just this one box set alone. Each scenario has five adventures. So you have six scenarios. So six times five is 30. Okay, then you have the, uh, actually it's one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six times five is 30. Then you have the three uh, prequel adventures that come in here, okay, and that gives you another three. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and then the three there, yeah. So, huh? so you get a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, you really do. It's a full-blown long campaign that you're gonna have plenty of time, and you can play solo with friends it's great and it's it's just long I mean you have a lot you get a lot and I really like it I think it plays simplistic every now and then you gotta do some math or you may forget some rule on a card that was different from the last adventure and all that kind of stuff but um I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just, it's, it's fabulous. I, I, I highly enjoy it. I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorites. And so next time when we play Pathfinder, we're gonna play Skull and Shackles, and that's gonna add, it's, it's more of a pirate theme type thing. It's gonna add firearms, not like you know machine guns or nothing, but like flint locks and stuff like that, boats. Um. And a different, different altogether type of theme to it. Um, but I highly recommend this. And if you have the money to spend, spend and get this. Which one of the four would I recommend first? Honestly, I would recommend this one first. Get this one first. I like the theme for the first half of it. Um, and it, it's easier to play. The other ones add mechanics that complicate things a little bit. So I would highly recommend this one first. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you next time. So until then, have fun.